I love the way the First Gen Lounge makes me feel. Because it creates a space where I belong. Where we're able to create community. The fact that it's a community. It's a safe place. It also gives me a place to understand different perspectives. The stories of these individuals prescribe transformational perspective. I receive encouragement, enlightenment, empowerment. And also serve as a catalyst to just keep going. Where we're able to be our true selves. I'm allowed to be an unapologetic first gen. And above all else, tell our story. And every episode is unique. I love it. I'm your host, Dr. Eve, and I'd like to welcome you to the First Gen Lounge. Hey, hey, welcome back. And if you are new, hello to you. I hope that you will continue to come and kick it with us. Okay. So today's topic, I have just kind of had swirling around in my head for a very long time. I'm talking about maybe like a couple of years long time. And over the past year or so, it's been really like, you should just do it. You should just do it. But nothing, it never felt right. (laughs) And mind you, in episode 221, we talked about when to say no to opportunities. I've had to say no to myself (laughs) about doing some things, but I'm in a space where I'm ready. Like really, that's all it boils down to. So today, my advice for those of you who are new and aspiring speakers. I could talk a long, 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 long time about it, but I decided to just focus on a few things. I'ma just just hit it and we're gonna keep it moving. Okay? Cool. So my first piece of advice, a thing to just know, is to know who you are after. Be crystal clear about who you are after. And what I mean by that is the person who you are wanting to deliver your talk to. College student, high school student, uh, adolescents who are coming from group homes, professionals who are in marketing, black, age, location. Start with that and be as specific as you can be. Because knowing, (laughs) knowing who you're after will start to give you a sense of where they are. And when you learn where they are, then it'll, you'll get to figure out who is serving them so that you can get to them. So know who you are after, write it down on a piece of paper to the T, to the absolute T, so that you're not all over the place as well with opportunities in the beginning. Because again, going back to episode 221, um, how to say or when to say no to opportunities. One of the things I did early on was say yes to everything that had me everywhere because I'm gonna be a speaker, just be a speaker. And how things continue to evolve is like, you know, the riches is in the niches, right? Um, but even so having a focus also helps people know to find you like that doesn't mean only these people can find you and want to work with you, but it helps get clarity. So even with like your marketing, your setup, your content, when you know who you're after, it'll drive so many things. So sit down with yourself. Here's some homework and make right down to, I get to the absolute T what is this person where, you know, male or female, what kind of home do they live in? Um, what what is what does their life look like? And that is probably one of the most powerful starting points, um, even for any point, anything that you would ever create in your business. That was some game. And you're gonna come back and be like, dang, it was that this is that's game game. Like that's that's the whole game. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, my second thought for you is to start with just one signature talk. Um, finesse that first, craft that first, get feedback about it first to even see, you know, how it works, um, especially for whoever you're after. Because when you do three, four, and five at a time, while you are very well qualified to do so, I'm not taking away from that, but what it does is again kind of has you like distracted sometimes and have you one place, one place, one place. So, what do you really want to start with? and build with in terms of being able to like jumpstart 
you're speaking and just do that one and push that one now if somebody asks you well can you do this for us i'm not telling you to say no at all but i'm telling you to at least have that one that you can focus on to get the experience again to build the relationships and to start also seeing what was next right and then that will help you think about future programs or even how you want to craft them or even if you need a whole bunch of them um just to be free with you so start with one signature talk make that your signature build off of that and then continue to introduce things um that that's just something i actually found helped me initially and then i began to start to get a feel for my market and then that helped me to also say these would really be really good long term so that's really why i'm telling you that because you really get to see what's out there and even if again you should go one way or the other um or <laughs> other than having all the talk to all these things and it's like oh, okay from the start you want to have a laser focus that's what i'm trying to get at um be prepared to be rejected <laughs> did i say that nice did you like that but i'm talking about like just get ready for no 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 sometimes hell no <laughs> um i don't know if you're gonna get a hell no i mean i hope you don't but i would definitely say just be prepared that in the beginning there are going to be far more no's than there are going to be yeses um and, and that's okay that's normal because in business you get significantly more no's than you get yes um people look at the significant yeses and think you don't get no's but it's the other way around um and so no is, is quite common um and no is okay because just like you would say no to opportunity you have to realize that what you're presenting people is also an opportunity for them to collaborate so like yourself what they are saying is right now this may not be a good fit doesn't align with our goals and values right um maybe they don't think you have the skill set and it can be a whole other number of reasons you, you like how i put that together from like 221 and just like the opportunities oh i think that's probably one of my best finesses <laughs> of the content i put out like okay make it a connect but no really though but just think about the fact that you are going to get some no's um and it's going to feel like dang well what did i do what's not right what's not wrong so just imagine you having three or four programs you having seven or eight different groups you're after and you get all these no's you have no time to even sit and think well what you know about this thing maybe do i need to change or tweak and when you have a lot going on it can even make it confusing so even with the no's be prepared to be rejected be prepared for people to be like nah in the time that i've been out here in these speaker streets um one of the reasons probably the top reason that i have found that people have actually said no has been because of budget and not having the budget not knowing when they're going to have the budget um and this is speaking more to from like the collegiate arena that i've been in most um but it's it, budget is, is likely the thing or maybe they have a budget but their budget is <laughs> um not where where you would want it to be and i laugh because i'm gonna say something else and i'm not gonna say it i'm just you know just gonna keep my thoughts to myself <laughs> <laughs> but uh but and really like so like so maybe it, it's no because of that or maybe they also just booked a speaker um maybe they no longer have the program maybe the person who used to be in that position who could have hired is no longer there there are so many reasons for why um people aren't able to say yes to the opportunity at the time and again that is okay and so however you may choose to go about getting more information if you want to by all means feel free you know i'm not going to tell you how to run your business but one thing that i will say in this moment in time with you is that asking or following up is typically i don't say easier but it's a different atmosphere to do it if you're actually on a call with someone versus an email too so i'm, I'm gonna just throw that at you um and let you do what you want to with it but there are a lot of people too, um, by the way, who will reject you initially and come back around to you when the time is right. So don't think that the, the no's or rejections are final as well. So one of the things you can say is, would it be okay for me to follow with you, you know, um, in the future to see if we can collaborate? And typically those people who have reasons that are, you know, again, kind of beyond their control or it's just other stuff going on, they will likely say yes and then those who just don't want a partner they just gonna say no that's okay 
<laughs> it is what it is, right? But again, that's okay because you have to think there are thousands and thousands and thousands, I'm, millions of businesses. But of course, depending on the area where you are, that's why we're trying to stick with the thousands and thousands um, of opportunities for you to be able to engage with the folks. Um, so that's just, again, something for you to keep in mind. Um, the other thing is just be ready and willing to invest. And when I say being ready and willing to invest, that means doing what you need to do to develop um, one yourself, but also to invest in your business, be it that it's going to be equipment or programs or conferences or whatever that looks like for you in your business and for you to decide on, be ready and willing to invest. And here's why I'm slick going to add a thought that I shared with one of my homegirls recently. And it's something that I've been learning to stand by as uh, as a service oriented business. If you're just going to do speaking, because a lot of times, you know, people change, you know, how they do things. I mean, clearly, I've been one to significantly change over the years. But in this space, something I say as a rule of thumb, and I'm not saying go out here and just jump out here and be wild. But think about where you want to be as a speaker and think about your investments to get you there. You shouldn't charge what you're not willing to invest because what i found is as i have invested more because of even my belief and my mindset around what investment looks like and what i know i'm willing to invest and to know the size of my business to know you know what our financials look like if me compared to a a significantly larger organization can make the investment I'm not saying they should, right? Or that they have to, but the potential is greater. And also understanding that what I believe about investing, I know that it can and will be returned, right? And that's mindset that's thinking about, you know, giving and receiving and reciprocity on a much deeper spiritual level. So if I can let it go, other companies can let it go, right? Um, it's an exchange. All of all of business is an exchange across the board. And for me, again, just understanding if I know that something is worth the investment, right? Um, then I will make the investment because you want to have people look at you as well in your business and understand that it's worth the investment. But when you start making those investments, right? It'll become easier and crystal clear for you that yes, somebody can and will invest in your business the same. If you need to play that back and sit with that, by all means. <laughs> but it took me a little while to get that right. And I, free game, free game. I'm giving it to you today, or at least the best I can. What I'm gonna give you today. So, but yeah, but that's that's significant. Um just thinking about mindset, especially around money and scarcity and all kinds of things. And I know there are situations where it's kind of like, but what if I don't have it, right? Do what you can with what you got, where, where you are right now, and where you can get to different spaces to do things that may be more, by all means. Um, but remember one thing about money here is that money, um, there's an infinite amount of money. You know, there's enough wealth for all of us and when you start to believe that, you'll also start to attract others who believe the same. And again, it can become a very effortless thing um, in some ways to, to agree on what goes in or what goes out comes back in. So, okay, did we get a little deep with that? <laughs> it's okay if we did, cause you know, I love you. I do, I do, I do. Um, very last thing for you. Very last thing for you, remember that this takes time. Oh, it takes time, it takes time. Um, a lot of people may not even realize that, like for me, speaking has been an all my life thing. All, I about it, all my life, <laughs> you know, color purple, okay. Look, I'm not, I ain't got time for copyright issues, right? But um, so for me, it's thinking about speaking is definitely a craft. Um, it's a skill that you can develop and will develop over time. But I think it's also an incredible gift to have because not everybody has it. But even the most gifted person doesn't just jump out there and here they are, six-figure speaker. Um, so it takes time because, again, it's, it's business. And a lot of people, this is what I found, they don't see speakers 
as entrepreneurs or having a business, they only see a person who just, you know, delivers engaging, engaging talks. But that's the furthest thing from the truth. And again, something that I've had to learn to navigate and share with folks over the years that as a speaker, especially when you build the business and it's not a kind of side gig or, on, you know, just I'm doing it here and there thing. Um, so for me, thinking about being a speaker really boils down to, again, the fact that this is more than a happy, feel good talk that we're having, but I'm helping you you know, and your business to achieve goals. This is something that I am providing a, a service to you. And even with those things, right? Um, whenever you make an investment, you can expect a return. So it's more again than just bringing me in to fill in some time. It's more than just an event to just have. It's far more robust than that. And because of that, you know, with the objectives that I have set forth, with the outcomes that I have set forth to be intentional in these talks, to be able to support your audience, to be able to support you and your work, um, the investment will come with a return. And so with that in mind, you know, it's something that has to be learned because in the beginning it's, oh, yeah, I'm just having a happy talk. And oh, yes, I'm just having, you know, this and I'm talking about that, but what kind of skills are being built because of this conversation what about mindset you know what about all kinds of things that your particular talk may be able to help the person who would be your potential client um with so yeah that thing get deep <laughs> so i'm more than a speaker right i mean yes i am a speaker and all day through and through i am a speaker but again a lot of the shifts for me moved me to yes i am an entrepreneur and i have a business and while speaking is still a very large part of that and how I've been able to get my business off the ground and to even like move it in a direction and again to evolve, then that has helped me to branch into all kinds of things because I learned the business mindset and started to look at so many things different. Cause you know, I don't have a business background. Um, it was never intending to be an entrepreneur, but here we are <laughs> and I love it. I love it. You know that I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh. I realized that I said a thousand times I couldn't imagine doing anything else so my dear i hope that you have enjoyed this session i hope that it has served you well and hear me when i say i just only scratch the surface if you i like scratch the surface of the scratch of the surface of the scratch of the scratch of the surface <laughs> because this speaker thing definitely can and does get deep um and there's so many things to consider even like on a personal level um professionally how you want to show up all kinds of things but take what you will from this and go forth and do what you must um, as well. And just know that it will work out for you. Um, dream your own dream and please don't compare yourself to what other people got going on. And also realize that sometimes when you see people who seem like they're so much further along, it's probably because they are. Because there are a lot of people who we don't even know, right, who are doing things and one day they just pop up and yet they've been at it for 10 and 15 years. Cause I've been in the game and have been working toward, you know, where I am now for more than a decade. A lot of people don't see that, right? They don't know that. But then those who remember back in the day, they do. And so it's kind of saying, you know, you, you've earned your stripes um, and you will, you have, but just keep building and keep going. And also, you know, before we go, just wanted to share with you, please feel free to head over to First Generation University and check out the free resources learn more about our upcoming trainings because i really 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 want to help us who are first generation college graduates and entrepreneurs to really just create our legacies and do what we will to serve the world in only the way that we can right so again check out our our trainings any of the courses we have um and also the membership the first generation entrepreneur association and let's see what we can do to be able to get you to where you want to go. But yeah, that's all I got for today. So go slay. Um, be good to yourself. Know that I love you. But most of all, keep pressing forward. All right. I'm out. Peace.